Here's a problem where you're given P equals type equations for demand and supply. Now, the equivalent Q equals equation for this is Q equals 15 minus 1 half P. So if you were to try to solve this equation for P, you would get this. And there's usually not a time when it's more useful to have a Q equals equation than a P equals equation. So if you get one like this, it's just sort of saving you a step. You know, like when you need it for that elasticity formula or something like that. So if you see P equals, then it actually turns out that it's a lot easier to graph because this is really just like a line with Y equals MX plus B. Only here, it's B plus MX. You have your slope is 2 times Q, your intercept is 30, so this original demand equation has a price intercept of 30, and then minus 2Q, you could find out what that Q intercept is if we just set P equal to 0, 0 equals 30 minus 2 times Q, Q is 15. And then the supply curve is 5 plus 3Q, so we know that its intercept here is 5. And now you want to find the equilibrium price and quantity before the tax. So for demand you have P equals something, supply you have P equals something. So th since they both equal P, they can be set equal to themselves. So 30 minus 2Q equals 5 plus 3Q. So let's subtract 5 from both sides. Let's add 2Q to both sides. So we get 5Q equals 25, and divide by 5, we get Q equals 5. So we know this Q with no tax is 5. Now the P, you should get the same P whether you plug in Q equals 5 to this equation, so you'd get 20, 3 times 5 is 15, plus 5 is 20, or this equation, you get 30 minus 2 times 5, so 30 minus 10 is 20. So we know this price is going to be 20. Now, it says there's a $5 per unit excise tax. What's really nice about having this stuff in the P equals format for that is you, when you have a $5 excise tax, you're going to shift the demand curve down by $5. So your new intercept is going to be 25. And so here, your D with the tax is going to be 25 minus, and we haven't changed the slope to Q. So that means it intersects right here at 12 and a half. So if P equals zero, then Q equals 12 and a half. So now if you want to find what's the new P and Q with the tax, you just have to set 25 minus 2Q equal to 5 plus 3Q because we have the same supply curve. Once again, I'm going to add 2Q to both sides. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, and we get 20 equals 5Q. We divide by 5, and we get Q equals 4. So now we have Q with the tax is 4, and then we can just plug that 4 back in. So 5 plus 3 times 4 is 17. So now we know that the price the sellers are going to keep is 17, and we have to find out how much will buyers pay. So when we go up to the original demand curve, if we plug in a quantity of 4, 30 minus 2 times 4 gives you 22. Now you should be able to double check your work. You should know 22 is the price that buyers pay, and 17 is the amount that sellers get to keep. So the distance between here, the price that buyers pay and the price that sellers keep, should be the amount of the tax. It should be $5.00. 22 minus 17 is 5, so you can double check your work that way. And now when you find out uh, what share of the tax is paid by buyers, well, they're paying $2 of this tax, right? 22 is the price they pay now minus the original price of 20. And then sellers are paying the rest of it. So 20 minus 17, that's $3. So buyers are paying $2 out of a $5 tax, that's 40%. Sellers are paying three dollars out of a five dollar tax that's sixty percent so you can figure that sort of thing out 
and uh, you know, just look at all these areas. You can find your tax revenue equals five dollars per unit times four units, so you're making twenty dollars in tax revenue. You can find your deadweight loss by finding the area of your deadweight loss triangle. So, uh, the drawing a graph is really the way to go, and you can use that graph to answer just about any question. And so, don't worry if you see things in p equals format. That actually turns out to be a little bit easier.